Headlines, your campus, your voice. Presented by our new students, for our new students. Join us as our new live begins now. The race for Pennsylvania governor has yet another contender tonight as Allegheny County Executive Dan on Honorado officially announced his candidacy today. Good evening. I'm Casey Folga. And I'm Chris Beginski. The long-expected announcement came from Mr. Honorado this afternoon as he joins four other Democrats seeking the nomination. The county executive has begun a three-day tour of the Keystone State and will be holding a rally in a union hall on the south side this evening. Honorado is now serving his second term in his current office, a position he won uncontested in the last election. Even though it will be another eight months before voters decide who will be the next governor, a recent poll is suggesting that the race is still wide open, with some 44 percent of Pennsylvanians calling themselves undecided when it comes to choosing Ed Rendell's successor. The Carnegie Library Board of Trustees announced drastic changes today concerning several of its branches. The Beachview, West End, Hazelwood, and Lawrenceville branches will be closing. The changes will also have the Carrick and Knoxville libraries merging, as well as the Mount Washington branch being moved. Due to the service cuts, the library hours will be reduced by 28% and library fines and fees will be increasing. A total of 30 different library positions are said to be eliminated. Students at the downtown campus today may have noticed a few changes, as the building is being used for a major motion picture being filmed here in Pittsburgh. The movie, a thriller titled The Next Three Days and starring Russell Crowe, began filming downtown today, causing a few street closures. Several floors of the RMU building are being used as a base for extra cast members and crew. Filming is expected to wrap up here in our region sometime in November. The debate over the future of our nation's health care system is still going strong. But what exactly are some of those proposed changes? And what do students here at RMU think about them? Mark Connington checks up on the story. Summer, President Obama issued a goal to Congress to reform the current health care system of the United States. Nearly five months later, and after countless protests, arguments, and speeches, you're illegal. Health care reform in America is closer to being accomplished than at any time in our nation's history. The health care reform proposal addresses several issues, including reducing costs by guaranteeing a choice in doctors and health care plans, invest in preventative care, maintain coverage when you change or lose your job and end barriers to coverage for people with pre-existing medical conditions. The total cost for this proposal? $635 billion over 10 years. Critics of the plan, such as the 912 Project and Tea Party Patriots, feel the government is taking over the health care industry and soon becoming a socialistic nation. What student still remains on the fence regarding this issue? I do not believe that universal health care would be a good thing or a bad thing because the people that don't have health care and cannot afford health care would want to go to the system, but yet all the companies that provide for other people will lose their profits and all their customers because the people that do have health care would want to go to government health care. Soon Congress will vote on this proposal, and one thing is for certain. Big changes are coming to the health care industry. Reporting on health care reform, Mark Coddington, RME Live. This past Wednesday, the former president of Pakistan, Pervez Musharraf, kicked off the Pittsburgh Speaker Series in Heinz Hall. President Musharraf shared his experiences and vision for Pakistan. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is indeed a very proud privilege for me to be given this opportunity of talking to you, such an August gathering, and sharing my views uh, with you tonight. October 14th will feature the next speaker, Jean-Michel Cousteau, an underwater explorer, oceanographic film producer, and environmentalist. Coming up after the break, strong words for Iran from the Obama administration. Plus, what does the weather have in store for the week ahead? Janik Frampton is here with your forecast. Stay tuned. The Obama administration is prepared to impose sanctions on Iran if diploma diplomatic efforts to curb its nuclear programs fail. A top official told the Senate Banking Committee Tuesday that a comprehensive plan targeting key vulnerabilities in Iran is in the works. Pennsylvania Senator Bob Casey says Iran should be punished for trying to deceive the international community about its nuclear program. International law by not notifying 
the IAEA when construction on the uh, Fordu site started more than three years ago. Why are international inspectors invited only after, after the regime is caught misleading the world again? So I believe we have several uh, strategies here that have to be employed, and they're on concurrent or parallel tracks. First, the negotiations conducted by the administration are important and should continue. Several lawmakers are calling for tougher U.S. sanctions following that disclosure that Iran has a second nuclear facility. Across southern India, thousands of troops and relief workers are providing aid to areas hit hard by floods. The death toll from the flooding has risen to at least 300 and about a million people have fled their homes. Many people are being housed in relief camps, but others are not so lucky. The focus now is distributing food and water and assessing damage. Air Force planes and helicopters have been dropping food packets for residents. Well, it, it's been kind of cool lately here in western PA, but the temperature is still not too uncomfortable. I personally want to hear about how it's going to be in the week ahead. And the man who would, the man who would tell us that, I believe, is a man by the name of Channing Frampton, who also uh, was known as Roger Davis for a while in the play Rent here at the Colonial Theater. Did a fantastic job, if I do say so myself. And we are going to be going over to him right now to hear about the week ahead. Channing, what's the forecast like? Uh, thanks, Chris. You're too kind. It was a great time performing in Rent, and as you can see, my hair is still blonde from that. But hey, look at the temperature right now. 70 degrees out there. That is, that's, that's just wonderful. If you're out there enjoying the weather, 70 degrees is a nice temperature to be enjoying. Dew points at 46, humidity is at 42%, and our pressure is at 30.15 inches. Winds are out of the south at 8 miles per hour, so it's, it's a really decent day out there for the 6th of October. Let's take a look at the temperatures around the rest of the region. 70 here in Pittsburgh, 70 in Beaver Falls, 69 in Butler, 71 in Burgettstown. It's nice down there. And we have a 68 in Catanning. Cool spot, Greensburg in the mountains, 65 degrees. Let's take a look at the temperatures around the eastern half of the United States. 63 degrees in Detroit, 68 in Cleveland, 63 in Fort Wayne. Also, our warm spot for the day is Columbus, Ohio at 72 degrees. Now, these temperatures all around the region are right, around, right about where they should be for this time of the year. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty nice out there. Now, let's take a look at what's coming up for the weather map. You can see we have a low pressure system moving its way throughout the Midwest and throughout the panhandle of Texas. These are both going to be moving up this way as we continue through the next 36 to 48 hours. It will bring us a chance of rain showers into the western PA region, which is going to Mickey, take that umbrella to class with you tomorrow, but overall, the rest of the week does look pretty decent. Our forecast for tonight looks like this. You can see temperatures will be dipping down to 50 degrees with a slight chance of rain showers going into this evening. And our almanac for today looks like this. We reached a high of 70 degrees, like I said. Our low, 54, or almost for this time of year, are 67 and 46. So you can see we're right about where we should be for this time of year. Our record looks like 89 and 27. Now, for tomorrow, this is what it looks like. High te temperature of 60 degrees, a little bit cooler than what we saw today. Rain showers will be moving through the area, but will be drying out by tomorrow evening. And for the five-day forecast, it looks like this. Temperatures will be moderating come this weekend with a high temperature of 65 on Friday. Sunshine on Thursday for a high temperature of 62 degrees, but keep the umbrella handy. Rain showers will be returning to the region for the beginning of this weekend. Now, as I said before, this past week I starred, well, starred, co-starred in the musical Rent, and uh, I just want to show you what it's like to be backstage at Rent. So take a look at what some, what some of the actors go through to get ready for the show here. The show's been going very well. Last night's audience was amazing. They loved us. We loved them. It just all worked. It was so exciting. It was just amazing. Like, I had the best night ever. It's gone really well. Um, we had the adjudication last night. They loved the show, which was, like, really exciting to hear. And they had nothing but good compliments to say to everyone. Well, here we are in the green room. Uh, we are now going to be walking in the hallway that connects into the theater. Here we are backstage, stage left. This is the bigger part of backstage because the other stage, of the other side of the stage doesn't really exist. And then here we are on stage. Whoa. That's the other side of the stage. 
other side of the stage. Yes, we took only a couple steps, but it's cozy and I think it works for rent. Coming up in sports, the Steelers look to bounce back. The Penguins begin the regular season. The chase for the cup continues, and the hunt for October begins. All this after the break. The Steelers went into Sunday night's game against the San Diego Chargers looking to rebound from a bad loss to the Cincinnati Bengals, which dropped them to third place in the AFC North Division with a 1-2 and two record. The defense and the running game needed the most work to get back on the winning track, and part of that was fixed in this game. Running back Rashard Mendenhall in for the injured Willie Parker had a great game, rushing for 165 yards on 29 carries and tallied two touchdowns. Ben Roethlisberger was a near-perfect, going 26 of 33 for 333 yards and two touchdowns. However, the defense again squandered a late lead in the game, allowing the Chargers to come back and score 28 points. Fortunately enough, the offense was able to put more points on the board en route to the 38-28 victory. The Steelers defense will need to keep working in practice to avoid giving up late points in the game. Up next on the schedule is the Detroit Lions this Sunday at 1 p.m. And now turning to the ice, the Pittsburgh Penguins began their quest to repeat as Stanley Cup champions over the weekend, taking on the New York Rangers on Friday night and traveling to Long Island Saturday night to face the New York Rangers. The banner was raised before the game against the Rangers, and that was the, only the beginning of the fun as the Penguins were able to come away with a 3-2 victory with goals by Evgeny Malkin, Sidney Crosby, and Tyler Kennedy. Then it was off to the road for the first of 13 back-to-back -back games this season because of the Winter Olympics, and it took a while before it looked like the Islanders were going to pull off the upset. Crosby got the Penguins on the board first, but Mark Strait and first overall draft pick John Tavares added power play markers to take a 2-1 lead for the Islanders. Then off of a faceoff, Penguins defenseman Mark Eaton tied the game up, but just 17 seconds later, Trent Hunter regained the lead for the Islanders. Ruslan Fedotenko nodded up the score with four minutes left in the third period, and after a scoreless overtime, the Penguins had their first shootout of the season. Chris Letang and Sidney Crosby both scored to give the Penguins a 4-3 victory, and their next game is against the Phoenix Coyotes tomorrow night at the Mellon Arena. And following his win last week at Dover, Jimmy Johnson was able to tighten up the Sprint Cup point standings to be within 10 points of leader Mark Martin heading into Sunday's Price Chopper 400. However, the other 10 chase drivers hope to get back into the hunt for the title with a good showing. So let's head to Kansas Speedway and take a look at the results. So here's the view from Casey Kane's car, but it's lap seven, a big wreck involving multiple cars. You see Paul Menard in the 98 car, David Reagan, Michael Waltrip all involved. There's Bobby Labonte's 71 car all beat up. And then here on lap 236, Dale Jr., after leading 41 laps early, fell down a lap uh, because of missing a lug nut. And here his engine explodes. And so lap 239, the leaders are in for pit stops. And Tony Stewart edges out with the lead in front of Kane and Jimmy Johnson. And that would be enough as Stewart crosses the start-finish line. Smoke picks up the victory in the chase. Gordon comes in second. Greg Biffle third. Juan Pablo Montoya fourth. Denny Hamlin fifth. And your point standings, Tony Stewart able to come within 67 points of still leading the points. Mark Martin, Jimmy Johnson, just 18 points back of the lead. And now to the diamond where the postseason is just about to get underway, but the American League Central Division has yet to be decided. The Detroit Tigers and the Minnesota Twins were both tied for the lead in the division following the 162-game schedule. So to break the tie, the teams went to game 163 of the regular season this afternoon, beginning a little less than an hour ago to determine who will move forward to face the New York Yankees in the ALDS. Right now, it is scoreless in the top of the third inning, and the Los Angeles Angels and the Boston Red Sox are in the other ALDS series. While the Los Angeles Dodgers and St. Louis Cardinals and the defending world champion Philadelphia Phillies and Colorado Rockies will square off in the NLDS. Both of those series will begin tomorrow. The ALDS start dates have not yet been determined. I'm Ed Albert, and that's your Sports Pulse. Gotta love the tiebreaker game. It's the third consecutive year that they've had to go to a tiebreaker in Major League Baseball. And it's also good to hear that Tony Stewart got another lead, or got another win, rather. Personally, I'm a fan of his, so thanks, Ed, for that sports report. So, it's... 
been yet another edition of RMU Live, and I'd like to thank our hardworking crew, our producer Chris Walker, and of course all of you for watching. I'm Chris Baginski. And I'm Casey Folga. Have good. a good night.